you on a gorgeous day. Now I got to tell you the truth. I'm one of the few people who doesn't actually need to be here because I know that they're not going to frack my house. You know how I know? I live in the state of Vermont where our leaders decided to ban fracking earlier this year. Our leaders actually think our state's beautiful enough to be worth trying to save, not blow up. And you know what? Pennsylvania is every bit as beautiful as Vermont. That, that country up there along the shale, those, that northern tier, that's some of the most beautiful country on earth. Now, I think I want to talk though less about Pennsylvania right now than about the larger world. Let me tell you what the largest thing that went on in the world this year was. The largest thing, the biggest thing, the thing that mattered most this year was not the election. It's not. It was that the Arctic melted like it's never melted before. Today, today is finally, finally the day when the long Arctic night begins to descend and that melting stops and the freezing begins. But when it begins, there is about 75% less ice in the Arctic in the sea than there was 40 years ago. That's an almost unbelievable change. I was with our great friend and colleague Jim Hansen from NASA yesterday morning looking at the um, looking at the new data and he what he said was he said this is a planetary emergency there's no other way to think about it now you want to know how the fossil fuel industry responds to a planetary emergency like that their idea is let's go up to the Arctic and drill for some more oil That's the mindset of the people in the rooms behind us. Whatever the problem, the answer is, let's drill some more. At a certain point, at a certain point, we need to remember the first law of holes, which is when you are in one, at the very least, stop digging. And we are in a deep hole. And it gets deeper and deeper the more new fossil fuel we find. I wrote a piece this summer for Rolling Stone which went unexpectedly viral. It was a series of numbers and what it demonstrated was that the fossil fuel industry already has before they frack, before they go to the tar sands. They already have in their reserves five times more carbon than the most conservative governments on earth, the most conservative scientists think would be safe to burn. And now they're looking for more. When the International Energy Agency ran the numbers on a natural gas future, they found that if you converted everybody off coal and oil and just ran the whole planet on natural gas, the temperature would go up about 6 degrees Fahrenheit. We'd be not in a 350 parts per million CO2 world, we'd be in a 660 parts per million CO2 world. That's what these guys are planning for us and we have to stop them. And I want to tell you just two things. One is that in this fight, you've got all sorts of brothers and sisters all over the world. 350.org works in every country but North Korea. And an awful lot of those countries are now facing exactly the same kind of fracking onslaught that we see here. And place after place, people are standing up. The premier of the new president of France got up yesterday and said that they were going to keep France's ban on fracking intact. Those people, many of them in places that have done nothing to cause the climate problems that we see, are nonetheless willing, willing to stand with us. I want to talk just for a second about what standing together means. It means building this big unified movement around 
tar sands, around fracking, around mountaintop removal, around all the other forms of extreme energy. It means advocating hard for conservation and renewables. It means going straight after the fossil fuel companies, convincing your colleges and churches to divest from their investments in the companies that are causing us trouble. And once in a while, I mean, we're never going to have as much money as these guys have. They've got all the... I mean, I see that there are a number of good Quaker theologians on hand who will know better than me, but my sense is these guys have more money than God, okay? So we are going to be unable to match them there. We're going to need the other currencies of movements, spirit and passion and creativity. And once in a while, once in a while, we're going to have to be willing to spend our bodies, too. When we sign this pledge to resist fracking, we mean it. Even if it means that some of us may have to go to jail at some point in this fight. Now, I had to go to jail for a few days last summer in this Keystone fight. And we were in Central Cell Block in D.C., which was not a great deal of fun. But you know what? It was not the end of the world. The end of the world is the end of the world. And that's what we fight. That's why we're here. That's why there are people all over the world standing up. And I cannot guarantee you that we're going to win and there is going to be trouble along the way. I can guarantee you that. All I know for sure is that we're going to make the fight and there is no group of people I'd rather make it with than you. Thank you all so much.